guess we'll go ahead and call the September 1st, 2021 meeting of the Historic District Commission to order. It is 7.38 according to my clock. Um, Hank, I know that I do not think we do not have meeting in the story. We do, we do not. Um, and again, we're in search of a minutes taker. So the person that had been doing it for us is no longer going to be able to do that. So we are looking for that. Uh, next month, you'll have two sets of minutes to approve. I uh, apologize for the inconvenience, but we're going to need a motion to defer and a second and a vote. Okay, so we're looking for a motion to defer on the meeting minutes. Oh. A second. Uh, can it be, does that be roll call again? No, you're here, so I'm, yeah. he's got your names up on the so screen. All so all in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Thank you. No opposed. Okay, Hank, I guess we'll just roll right into our first application. So yes, sir. Uh, this is, let's see, let's see what's the address. So here we go. It is for the Chan Van residence at 2632300. And I see Dr. Chamberlain's here, and obviously somebody who's really educated to blow windows. <laughs> so the floor is yours, and I think you have a PowerPoint, is that correct? Correct. So I'm going to move over so I can see. And I'll let them go first, Mr. Chair, as yeah. we didn't have uh, an opportunity to have anything presented prior to the agenda going out. Yep. So I'm going to do this so that we can do that. It might make the contrast a little better for the public as well. So let me just give you guys, I mean, this is, I don't know, my fourth or fifth time presenting to you guys. I know most of you guys are pretty familiar with our situation. I have um, taken your feedback. Um, hopefully, you know, the best I could and try to implement it in today's um, presentation as I have made it um, uh, as if I brought to your attention in previous um, presentations, um, I, our windows are in, um, you know, poor condition. I, I brought it to your attention that I think all of them need to be um, repaired. Um, the feedback that I've gotten or what you guys wanted to see to try to consider um, moving forward is um, you A, wanted to see um, the types of windows that we would be um, putting in our uh, home. And um, I think um, Rob has done that um, for you guys. And again, any question you guys may have, um, you can answer them a lot more um, eloquently and intelligently than I can. Um, Additionally, uh, you guys wanted uh, to see, um, have we looked at um, you know, the restoration um, piece of it? Can they be restored? Um, and obviously, um, um, you know, Rob has, you know, he works for Pella, so there's a, obviously he's got his Pella um, biases, so did we get any other uh, opinions or has anybody else um, looked at these windows and can they be, with reason, um, restored? And uh, I have, um, looked in that um, and I've gotten multiple um, opinions uh, who say they um, within reason um, cannot be um, restored. And when I say within reason, obviously, you know, with any um, amount of money, you can do anything you want, but within reason, uh, they cannot be practically um, restored to the level that we would like. And then um, lastly, um, I brought to the attention um, that I want to keep reiterating this attention. At, the, at their present state, uh, the windows are not safe. Um, I brought that up multiple times, and I want to bring it up one additional time. Again, um, an event in a fire, um, there is big concern that um, my young children would not be able to get out. So um, I, I did speak um, to the fire department here. And um, I spoke to um, Lieutenant um, Zawaki um, in length um, about the matter, obviously about my concerns, and he pretty summed it up pretty simply. Um, when you go into a home, um, the, the window needs to, for it to be considered safe, it needs to have minimum two functions. It needs to be able to easily be able to be opened. That's the first function. And the other thing, it, it has to be able to stay open once it's open. 
it's been argued that a lot of my windows um, can be, uh, you know, they're painted shut or whatever. Once you fix that, they can that. Possibly, uh, but it's been shown, and obviously we'll go in the presentation and been multiple of it. They don't stay open, so they're not safe. You know, plain and simple. Um, so those are the three points that, you know, that I wanted to uh, reiterate, and then obviously we'll, you know, we'll go to our presentation. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually got this this slide here from uh, Colorful. Um, they have a, this is part of a, a larger um, presentation they do to show what Color's doing to try to make the window that will um, <clears throat> meet the historical guidelines. Uh, as per the National Park Services. Uh, I think I emailed Pink a letter uh, from someone that works at Color Corp where we worked really hard to design a window uh, to meet the requirements. And I think we've done a pretty good job. And in the letter, it talks about how they've partnered back and forth with the National Park Service and gotten really good feedback on our window. Um, so if you want to go to the next one, we'll get into um, some of the things that I found and I took pictures of when I went to Mr. Sam's house. Uh, this is actually along the left side elevation of his house. Um, when, I, when I look at that, uh, I know he had some water issues on this side of his house uh, where he had some black mold in the basement. And it's very possible that these sills that have been uh, rotted and deteriorated to the point where the wood just crumbles in your hand, uh, that is prime example of how water can infiltrate a win uh, in, a win to in the window into the wall and then potentially lead down to the basement. So it could have been a determining factor for the black mold that was in his house that he had to, he had to deal with when moving in. Um, if you go to the next one. Uh, there's some more mold and mildew on the outside of the windows. Uh, high concentration of this of that. It's specifically along the left. It's all over the house really, but the left side was probably the worst. Uh, you can also see every window has storm windows as well, and most of them are either broken, the screens aren't there, um, they're just in really bad shape. Uh, I think, <clears throat> just from my opinion, whomever owned the house before Mr. Salmon probably didn't, didn't keep up with these windows like they should have. And uh, <clears throat> I'll get to some more issues that I saw. Um, as you can see in the, the middle picture on the left side, that's actually the, the metal jam. I, I call it a jam liner. That's what we call it on our windows. Uh, so I'll, I'll use that term here. Uh, that's a metal jam liner that the sash actually slides up and down in. And then the mechanisms that work the window are also in that. Uh, those are highly um, oxidized. Uh, so they're just, they're, I also did some research on what it, if I could find that particular part to replace it, uh, I was not able to find that part in metal. I found something similar in plastic, and each one of them run about $250 a piece. So you, you're talking, if those were suitable, um, I don't think they would be being plastic, but even the plastic ones were, it would be over $500 a window to replace those ones. Go to the next slide. Um, so this window is, is uh, it's actually in the, the side of the dining room, so I guess you would consider it the right elevation, but it's right up next to the garage. Uh, if you look at the on the left the, the left picture, the brick sill is actually bowed. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. Um, that that wall has actually heaved up a little bit. I don't know what caused that, but I do know what has been, what's happened after that fact. It's actually pushed the sill of the window up. And now the sill, which is supposed to be pitched out, so any water that hits it runs out, is now has a reverse pitch to it. So any water that hits that sill is running right into the frame of the window, which has cracked the frame of the window, so it's probably getting water inside the house at this point. Um, there's a closer picture of it in the middle. And then I took a picture of the right side there. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that can happen uh, with storm windows is you can get condensation uh, in between a storm window and an actual window, which I think is another uh, cause of uh, why he has so much mold and mildew around the, the outside of his windows. And I took a picture of all that. And it was a pretty dry day that day. That was a lot of condensation on the window right there. Uh, let's go to 
the next one to you. Uh, so that's a window. I'm trying to think. Okay, so that is in a second floor bedroom right there in the front of the house on the side. So this particular window on the left there is right above the one we just looked at. And that's actually missing the jam liner on, on, the, uh, on the left side. Uh, that window will not stay open at all. Um, I actually struggled to get it open. And then when I did, it just slides right back down. Um, and this is in a bedroom as well, which you would need you know, an egress requirement and all of that. The middle window shows a grill that's been damaged. Um, so that's an interior part of the grill. And then the, the right side picture shows the, the mechanism that holds the sash with the sash balance at the top. And there's quite a few throughout the house where those are bent, damaged, and they just they don't slide correctly. So that whole jam liner would need to be replaced. And as I said before, I, I, I wasn't able to find it, and, and I think Mr. Shaman, the gentleman he talked to about restoring the windows, uh, said that he didn't know if he would be able to find that part either. Um, these windows, I believe, are from 1952 when the house was built. Can we go to the next one? Oh, so this is just to show <clears throat> that particular window on the right side elevation. There's another one that I struggled to get open. I finally did, and I can't get either one of them. And, and actually, once I, I got it open, it slid down, and then the top dash slid down as well. So they, they don't hold uh, true to what they're supposed to do. Um, so then, and that just refers to what Mr. Shaman talked about. Shaman talked about with his safety of his, his children's bedroom. So we go to the next one. Now we just get into individual stuff. I've talked a lot about this already. This is that one particular uh, window on this, uh, the dining room side uh, that you know has the reverse pitch still. There's water, water infiltration coming in. It won't lock either. So that's a security issue because that, that window actually is if you walk up to his garage, it's right there on the left-hand side. It, there's nothing to keep somebody from prying that open and getting into the house. Uh, because as much as I try, that sill at the bottom, which is now he, won't allow the, the sash to line up with the sash lock from the top, from the top, and it won't lock for him. So that's actually an entry point to his house right now. I would encourage him to do something about that until it's um, um, Go ahead to the next one. Now we're just going to run through um, just various rooms. Um, so the picture on the left is actually right above the, the previous picture. And as you can see, we have more wood rot on the sill right there on the right hand side. And this, this window is one of the worst. It's got wood rot, it, we're missing parts uh, in the inside of the window. Um, and it's just another one that obviously is not going to stay open because we're missing parts. Uh, now we just, we're just going to scroll through. Um, this, there's a lot more of the same. Uh, just more, we've seen some of these pictures already. Just a lot of. Uh, Neglect over years, um, and, and you're going to see that consistently throughout. Do you want me to just so, go through these? Yeah, just go through, and we'll get to. Uh, it's actually one of the, the living room on the, the left side elevation again. Yeah, just keep going. There's four or five more. So hold on for this one right here. This is a sliding window on the back side living room, uh, off the uh, call it a dining room, call it a kitchen, whatever. I could not get that sliding window to open. Um, and there's also gaps at the top, which are allowing air infiltration to come through. And that screen uh, doesn't operate. Um, it's like a hinged screen on the outside of that sliding window. Uh, I assume that's the, the technology of that time. Um, but it, uh, we, would, we don't have sliding windows in our wood products, so that would be replaced with you know, another double hung or whatnot. But that window isn't working as well. So just interesting if you want to go back to that one. Um, that is the only original screen that's still maintained on the house because that's the wooded original. So when I had the restoration company come out, because the original um, was all wood, and, and, uh, and obviously they had changed it throughout the years, but that's the only original. And I had asked them if we were to restore that, can that be done? And they said they don't. Everything would have to be um, customly um, made for every individual window because that's not there. I mean, there's nothing to um, so we have to build that back up. So that's that's the original there. Everything that I currently had or was present was was not the original. Obviously, it was replaced um, throughout. 
the years. Or I, mean, I don't have a time frame. That's the, I mean, that's what he had mentioned to me. That's the only original one that, that was still alive. You can tell that because of the the hanger on the top. I had those, I had those same kind of um, screens, and of course on the second floor, I couldn't get up there to change them. So my mom went to Sears and got replacement ones like what your house had, similar. This is just more windows that don't operate correctly um, upstairs back. One of the things I, I did see on, uh, especially the siding, um, there's coil trim around a lot of the a lot of these windows that were on the siding. I don't know when that was put in. Uh, I'm assuming that wouldn't meet any his, you know, the historical stuff. I just I just noticed that uh, when I was looking through the pictures. And that actually is in a bathroom. The bottom, the bottom thatch is a, a frosted glass, and the the metal jam liners inside are rusted as well. So, for clarification on that, with the coil stock framing on the outside, are you proposing like a sash pack that slips in and the coil stock stays the same, or are you going to be replacing? We can do it either way. Uh, They're going to want to know which way you're proposing. Okay, um, I'll have to talk to the contractor. He might. Uh, replace that with something different coil stock to freshen it up, but he can slide it right into the frame as well. Yeah, I, I, it'll depend on what window setup you're ordering. So if you have uh, like different coil stock or something like that, and you think that's what he's going to do, that's what you should maybe ask the board to consider. Okay. So that they at least they approve one thing, yeah. and then if there's a a change or a problem with it, then that conversation can be had. Okay. So our windows are built uh, in a particular way. We have this groove on the side of our frame. Um, so we could we could install it. We, two ways to install that is either a full frame replacement where we take everything out. We put this new in, and then the, the new aluminum coil stock will lock into this frame, and then he can uh, basically copy what we have there. Uh, the other option would be to um, take the sashes out, uh, <clears throat> which uh, you can, you know, rip all the sashes out, rip all the mechanisms out, and actually slide the window in there, and still put new aluminum that will match and, and uh, redo that aluminum on the outside so it'll freshen it all up. So we, we could do it either way. Um, he could probably just go to page 17. We'll get into. Uh, so I know there's conversation about energy efficiency versus uh, single pane versus double pane. Um, we kind of had that conversation a little bit ago. Um, it's, so there's two factors that windows measure as far as two determining factors. Really, we have a U factor and we have what we call an H H SHGC or solar heat gain coefficient. It's the two things that Energy Star uh, uses to measure whether whether a window would be Energy Star compliant or not. Um, <clears throat> Generally, the, the range for a U factor is 0.2 to 1.3, and the range for a solar heat gain is coefficient 0 to 1. On a single pane of glass, the U factor uh, runs about 1.09, which is extremely high, and the solar heat gain coefficient ranges uh, to about 0.81. Basically, what that means is um, any heat inside the home is going to escape through the, through the glass, and and it's not going to block any heat coming from the outside. So when the sun's rays hit the glass, it just shines right through um, and lets all the heat in, in, into the house. So your furnace is going to run more in the winter, and your air conditioner, air conditioner is going to run more in the summer. Uh, with Pella's dual pane with low E argon, <coughs> we have a U factor of 0.29 on our advanced low E. We do have another one, uh, low E, called advanced comfort which is a second, second film of low E that we have put on there that brings our U factor down to around 0.25. Um, so it would be energy start qualified. Um, and dual pane offers on average a 12% savings in energy costs, which I'm not sure what his, his bills are, but it usually ranges between five and $600 a year for the consumer. So some of the things that we've really tried to do to meet historical guidelines is we use butt joinery on all of our sashes, as you can, as I showed, as you saw in the, in the, the display back there. And I can, you can pass this around if you'd like. Um, not too heavy. 
uh, authentic profile decks. Uh, we have uh, muttons that range, we can do five eighths, seven eighths, inch and a quarter. And believe it or not, the Pella Reserve is the most comfortable, customizable window that we offer. So we can do different things like that, which is, I joked over there and said that uh, I could write your name in the glass. We actually have a window at Pella that has a Pella logo uh, in a grill similar to this. We have a putty, put, the, we have a putty glaze uh, option. We also have the OG option, but for historical purposes, the putty glaze is what we would use. Uh, through style construction, um, equal proportional sight lines. So we've done our best to match your styles and rails. And if you need those schematics, I have them in our architectural design manual as well. And I can get one out of my car and bring it to you if you'd like. Uh, and then we also have, which uh, Mr. Salmon doesn't have, we do have the option of the sash lug that we can put on the window, but still allow the window to tilt if needed. So uh, he doesn't have those on there, but if you did have one um, that has the sash lugs on there, it is an available option that we can put on there to match what's, what's uh, existing. Uh, the window we will build, build will, as far as muttons and everything, will be the same as what's there. So whatever the pattern is, if it's a two by four, I guess we can look at, uh, go back to his uh, front elevation. Looks like he's got uh, a four by three. That, those are three by twos. That's not an issue. Uh, those are all, that's, that's actually just a standard, um, typical grill pattern there for us. Just for a quick clarification, I understand that Pella can make the 5 8 7 8 inch and a quarter. What's on there that you're going to be replacing? 7 8 So 7 8 for 7 8 So yep. that's an even swap out. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to be clear. I actually measured that when I was at his house to make sure that we were, we were getting the same thing that he had. Mm -hmm. um, the, the next slide is just a couple of pictures of things that we've done in, in various... Uh, uh, other historical districts, and I have even more examples if you'd like that, of just some things that we where we've replaced with our product, our color reserve product, um, you know, to, to make things match. And the grill, that last picture, the grill on the left is is possible. I'm not sure why this particular one they did a two by two, but a, a two by one is, is definitely possible as well. And that is okay for that. Uh, yeah, we didn't have the benefit of having this, uh, you know, prior to that, but I, I do uh, want to state that I appreciate Dr. Shanbam's um, uh, efforts in getting us information that we didn't have before, uh, and it was considerably more thorough than we've had in the past, so I'm appreciative of that. I did have one point uh, that I just wanted to make clear. On your criteria for replacement, it says that the windows are not significant to the historic character of the building. Um, where did that come from? Uh, these were pulled from, I, I'm, I'm assuming that these criteria come from the National Park Service to tell us. That's not in there. The windows are not significant. So um, the reason that I'm bringing it up is because that's on windows that otherwise wouldn't be here. But the, the windows being significant um, doesn't mean you don't address it, which you've done. So whether it's to the satisfaction of the HDC or not, they'll have to vote on that. But um, windows are absolutely character defining. So I don't know where that is. So that was just a, that was just something that I want to know where you got that from because that's nothing that I've seen before. I, I mean, I, I, I stole that page from. <laughs> Yeah, I just have never seen the windows are not significant because that's even in our guidelines and it's in the uh, there's a preservation brief from the National Park Service that addresses windows. But I just wanted to comment on that. So, Mr. Chair, the floor is yours again. Do you want me to leave anything up or would you like me no, to? Just real quick, but yeah. everybody got this letter, just for the record. Um, I think this does a nice job of showing that we did
So a window for window, except for the one in the that slide or that was in the back of the house, that one's going to be replaced with a similar uh, grill pattern that would be in the. Uh, and that one we would have to do a two by a two wide uh, double. So it would be a match to all the other windows oh, so in the house. That one goes in the back of the house, correct? Correct. I'm sorry. And yeah. Now it looks like it's inside of an enclosed porch too, so you don't. That one is not. So the enclosed porch is kind of here, and that window's up. And then you you also have indicated that all the uh, storm windows, other than that one on the slider, have already been replaced at some other time during the. Uh, the, the uh, that is correct because um, because it's the the material they're made from. That I, I didn't know that, but when he when the restoration individuals came out, he pointed out original all the, was all the storm windows with the carpets on the outside of the house are not original to the. Uh, or it's it's your belief they're not original. I, I mean that was. I mean, uh, no, that's not my, I have... Okay, okay, that's uh, good to know. Okay, I'm all set. Okay, thank you. Thank um, so, there's that little thing about when things are changed in, in the history of the house, um, having to maintain the integrity of the biggest, uh, that can be a problem for us. Uh, you do have two windows that were replaced, you said, by the original owners sometime before. Maybe you did them right when you first moved in that are horizontal and have... That was, that was approved um, when we did our renovation oh. because when we had to knock out that wall, the window was coming. There was no way to preserve that, and that's what we presented, and that's kind of what was... And you're going to keep those windows the way they are, or are you going to replace them with windows like the rest of the house? And, and Hank, I have to ask you, what is the appropriate thing to do? Is that considered to be part of, are those change in style part of the, the history of the house now? Or no, they okay. haven't been there long enough to acquire okay. historic so significance. To, are you planning on... Uh, I mean, those are brand new three-year-old Pella windows that I was not planning on. I mean, those are functional, and it, they would look very similar. And those windows were kind of put on the modified edition. I'm putting that in quotes because Park even felt that that was an addition. Okay. Uh, personally, I don't think they look similar at all. They're different architectural style because of the way the windows are, are divided, the more horizontal feel to them. They're not divided down the center. So, if that's just, I'm, I'm just I, I think the, up, um, an observation is all. I think they were approved. Those were as close as we can get from the windows that we replaced. Because obviously, you know, you, you want to do it for similar, and those were as close to the windows that, you know, that we had originally on, on, that, on that back wall. So those windows weren't double hung like all the rest of your windows on the house? No, those were the windows, I mean, that's, I mean, we can't be, we came before this board, and this is those were the windows. And again, I don't know what um, Mr. Frankel, the previous owner, I don't know what he had done. There's no, I mean, you guys probably would have better records than we did, but I mean, and, and again, we presented it to that, and, and you guys, uh, you guys gave because it, it was as close to that. And again, it's Pella, everything is, you know, similar style. But you're right, it's, is it identical? No, it's not. That would be, but again, that's not that's not visible. From you know the street or from anybody's you know viewpoint, unless you can really do a full. It's visible from. It's not visible. Hill, because I walk past there with my dog every day, and I can see. Oh, if you're on top of the hill. Yeah. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, okay. there's two. I thought there was only one. I saw it the other day, and I went. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I, I was just curious. I'm just I'm just trying to you know be thorough. And I do want to say, because I know I gave you I gave you a hard time the last time because you didn't have a lot of information and only a few pictures, and what you had shown us were things that I think probably could have been repaired. But you've given, you've gone, you know, way farther and shown us much, much more documentation, and I can see that you have a lot of problems with the windows that we weren't able to see with the initial pictures that you showed us. So I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. That that changes the way I'm looking at you. Project and um, I think that's really all I have. To, oh, 
I didn't get a chance to try opening them. Did you get a chance to see if your kids can open that window? Yeah, I mean, if it's a function, I mean, I are, are they able to lift it? Because sometimes those new windows are, are stiff. And so I just was curious. I didn't try it myself. I did not have my kids lift it, but I'm assuming I will make sure they're oil moved up and they, <laughs> and they can be open. No, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm just, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't this, think there's the, this particular window, and Chris, you might be able to bear me out on this. My experience with this particular window is that it has an easy slide. Okay. Okay. I, I just asked because I know my brother had replacement windows, and that fell off. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. So, and these look so substantial. Um, I just forgot to try it when I was standing over there. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, your service. Mark. Uh, all I have is I'd like to thank you very much for the detailed uh, information you provided. Uh, had I seen this before, there never would have been any question in my mind about the need for replacement. Um, thank you again. Um, I don't really have any uh, any questions. Uh, this knowing this product line is the most appropriate product line. And, uh, I appreciate the fact that it's not a cheap product line, um, but it does the best to match the style and rail profiles and the mutton bar profiles. I appreciate the detail of the shadow bars, um, even the detail which most people who haven't had the joy of reglazing the windows, but the putty glaze detail, all of those things. Mine don't look that good when I reglaze mine. But, um, so I appreciate the sensitivity. This this note was very well done in terms of um, paying attention to what makes historic window replacements um, work. So I, I think it's a terrific product and I appreciate you being here and all the detail, thank you. Mr. Chair, at this point in time, just for a matter of uh, edification, you need, we normally have seven people here. Today we have four. You need the quorum vote, which is four, so you need four out of four. Um, you've heard the comments at this point in time. Do you wish them to proceed with a vote? Yes. So, Hank, obviously, I'm just going to, for the record, public participation. Uh, we did get a letter. So not that that's public participation, but at least we have a letter submitted in favor of it from your neighbor. So um, is that all we have in terms of public That's all we have in terms of public participation, Mr. Chair. Okay, so at this time, I'll just close the discussion. And I guess I'm looking to entertain a motion or yeah, entertain a motion. Um, I would motion that we uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness uh, for the Sham, Sham Man uh, residence at 263300 uh, uh, for uh, standard number two. Second motion. Second. Any discussion? Nick, do we need to specify in this if they're changing out lights or lights? Well, that's what they're proposing. Okay. Well, because. If you would prefer, if you would prefer to make a to make a friendly amendment to the motion, uh, Mr. Behrman may entertain that. And, and just just for the record, since it was discussed, we know we also have one slide that went to a pair of double homes, but I think that's very consistent with the rest of the house. And there's a couple of existing windows in the back that are newer that are not part of the project. Got to cover everything, right? So, um, is the second okay with that? Is the second okay with that? And the maker of the motion okay with that? Good. Are you okay with the amendments? Okay. Let's let's roll for a vote. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 There are no opposed. The motion passes. Congratulations. Thank you very much for the additional details. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Hank, do we have any other business this at evening? This, at this point in time, we do not. Um, I do want to thank you all for being here, even though the parking lot was a little bit torn up and it was an effort for everybody to get here. I appreciate that you've made the effort. And uh, again, thank you to Dr. Shanbam for, no, thank you guys. for his uh, presentation this evening.
And then, uh, again, I see nobody here for public participation, so at this time, I'll just entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I don't think we'll need to second. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. 813 is what I'm showing for the adjourn.